I'm here at the Red Hook Crit in Milan, which is different from any other bike race we've been to with GCN before, because the riders have to use fixed gear bicycles with no brakes. It's absolutely bonkers. Now, James Lousy Williams, fellow GCN presenter, is going to be competing in this race, rather him than me. But while I've been here, I've just noticed so many awesome bikes that, well, quite frankly, you don't see anywhere else. So I thought I have to show you these and do a video showing you some of the tech at Red Hook. So, right, let's go and have a look. Here you can see behind me one of the look riders warming up on the rather nice 875 Madison carbon frame. I've been asking the riders about what kind of gears they're using for Red Hook, and the 5014 combo seems to be the most popular choice for this kind of circuit. And the riders reckon that this will mean they average their cadence well over 100 with speeds they reckon of about 45 to 48 kilometers an hour average for this technical circuit. The other thing I've noticed is the cranks. Everyone's using shorter cranks because catching a pedal in Red Hook is a potentially big issue because you have to pedal around all the corners. So 165 cranks are pretty common and there's some 160s as well, but I'm gonna try and find the shortest cranks I can see. One of the cool things about Red Hook is that you actually get trade teams competing against amateurs, which you don't get many other bike racers. And these are the bikes of the Rocket Espresso Specialized team, as ridden by Alec Briggs and Justin Williams, who are amongst the favorites to win this edition of the Red Hook. Now, what's really cool here is this is an Alle sprint frame, which is quite unusual because it's aluminium. So they've got these really funky paint jobs on there, but it shows that to win, at Red Hook, you don't need a carbon bike, which is really cool. You can just win with an aluminium bike. And also, aluminium bikes are quite popular for Red Hook because they're deemed to be a bit more reliable, well, a bit more robust in the case of crashes, of which there are quite a lot. And it's quite deceptive that it's an aluminium frame because if you look at the seat tube, it's like a teardrop shape. And, well, you don't normally expect that kind of shape from an aluminium frame, but it shows how far aluminium manufacturers come. But Look at these wheels. So these are Roval wheels, proprietary specialized, but they've been custom painted to match the sort of paint job of the bike. And they're just so funky, they're really cool. And interestingly, they're running 28 millimeter tires as well for that extra grip. Another really cool piece of tech is that the team actually has these custom painted helmets to match the funky paint job on the bike. How rad is that? They are seriously cool. Just really bright and vibrant and different. Just spotted a really cool hack using a boot strap, right, as a bike stand. How cool is that? And this is one of the competitors' bike here at Red Hook. It's a really cool custom Don Walker steel frame from America, and it's all nice Philip Bray's beautiful frame. And this is just sums up Red Hook really. There's a lot of amazing custom sort of hand-built steel frames here, as well as sort of big frames from big brands. But it's nice to see that the sort of custom frame building community is thriving in this kind of racing, it's great. One of the more unusual bits of tech here from Red Hook is this, which is a Schindelhauer Hector, as ridden by the Schindelhauer Gates team. Now, it's an aluminium track frame uh, and it has a carbon fork, but the most unusual thing about it is that it's got the Gates carbon drive. So you've got this whopping chain ring, but it doesn't mean that the riders have a massive gear. It's still equivalent to the 5014 that a lot of the other riders and teams are using because the sprocket on the back is a 20 tooth. The reason why you have these much bigger gears is because the carbon belt drive works better when it goes through a bigger angle and not as tight an angle as a conventional chain. But the advantage of it is that it's really efficient and it's said to last three times longer than a conventional chain. The bikes are really simple, but one of the most important pieces of tech is tire choice. Now I've not seen a bike with tires narrower than 25 millimeters here, and I've been scouring the pit lane. This one actually has 28 millimeter tires. Now traction is just so important when you have to pedal around tight corners and hairpins, but also 
Today it's wet, which adds a whole nother spanner into the works. Generally, if people can fit 28s in their bike, and not many track bikes have that clearance, they're using 28s. There's also a full range. People are using tubeless, like on this bike, but also clinchers, and there's quite a few tubular tires still being used as well. But the other big thing with tires is the pressure. Now I've been looking around the pit lane and asking the experienced guys what pressures they're running, and it's surprisingly low. A lot of guys today are running just 60 PSI front and rear. And that isn't much at all, but it's crucial in order to gain that extra bit of grip. And although you lose a little bit of rolling resistance, the trade-off, because you can stay upright in the corners, well, it's a no-brainer. A bike that's really caught my eye, even though it is getting a little bit dark now, so apologies for the, the lack of light, because Red Hook actually takes place in the dark, is this Thorough. Now I have to admit, Thorough isn't a brand I've actually heard of before, but the paint job here is absolutely stunning. You've got this sort of nice iridescent glitter in the white section here, which when the lights shine on it, when they're racing in the dark, it really pings and it looks amazing. But these sections, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting. It's like the paint's just been flicked on it. It just looks absolutely awesome. I'd love to see more bikes with this kind of style on before, because I've not seen it. Chinelli is a brand that has, well, massive heritage in single speed bikes and track bikes. So it's great to see them represented here. And this is a Chinelli Vigorelli. And well, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's really simple, just with this nice red paint job. And then just like the mirrored silver Chinelli logo. I really like it. But what this undermines really is that these bikes are just really simple. This is an aluminium frame again, and, and it's not too expensive. It costs nowhere near the price of what a professional racing bike would cost in normal racing with gears and a carbon frame. Yet, this is all you need to be completely competitive at Red Hook Racing, which I think is really awesome. There's loads of really creative, cool touches at Red Hook, but one of the things is the numbers that all the competitors are given. So it's a folding design, as you can see here, but it folds as a number onto your seat post, but is rigid and aerodynamic, which is just, I mean, it's simple, but it's ingenious. It's so cool. Just spotted another really cool bike, which is this eight bar, and check out the paint job on this. So it's got this sort of pointillist paint scheme with all these dots of different colored paints overlaid on the matte black frame, and it just looks superb. I like how they've also carried it through into the wheels and customized the DT Swiss RRC 65 uh, deep section wheels as well. How cool is that? We're running 28 tires on here as well, tubeless, which is a common theme, and the classic 50-14 chainsaw, which seems to be the prerogative of the riders here at Red Hook. Hope you found this video interesting, covering an area of tech that we haven't done much on before. So if you have, let us know in the comments section below if you'd like to see more of it in the future. And if you'd like to see a video covering, well, the complete opposite of simple tech, something really complicated, then why not check out Sai's video for his KOM challenge bike in which he sort of modified it and did all sorts of fancy things to try and beat a KOM. But until then, I'll see you later.